All right, I'm here with uh, Phil Landman, conditioning coach for Miguel Cotto. How you doing, Phil? Yeah, yeah thanks, Phil. Thanks for having me. Thanks for, thanks for giving me an opportunity to talk. No, thank you. The pleasure's mine, brother. All right, uh, first of all, um, Phil, uh, how, how many years already have you been working with uh, Miguel Cotto? Starting on uh, four years so far. I think this is my 10th or 11th part of them. I'm not sure, but it's beginning on four years that I've been working with them. Okay. Okay. Cool. And um, does <laughs> does Miguel? How's Miguel Cotto? Does he like to pull pranks on you? Yeah, you know Miguel's a good guy to be. You know, obviously a great customer. Um, the way people see him professionally is not the way that he is socially at all. And you know, we have a great relationship. And you know, it's good, it's good to be around him. It takes him under pressure of of working you know, some of them. We, you know, I spend a lot of time with him during his camp, so to have his energy around us. I agree. I agree. And um, why? Why do you think? Um, why do you think Miguel Cotto could uh, couldn't defeat uh, Manny Pacquiao? Uh, um, no, I mean, yeah, obviously Manny's a great athlete, a great competitor. So I think he's from the night. Manny was the better guy. And from the night, we we prepared well for that camp. We got trained hard, and on the night, uh, yeah, Manny was just very good. So okay. well done to the better guy on the night. Okay, and um, do you, do you, do you think though even the fight went you know to the long distance? You you think the fight should have been stopped earlier? Uh, perhaps you know, but knowing Miguel, he doesn't want to give up. So I respect that for him, and you know, I wouldn't you know, I'm not sure what happened with that. But you know, it's it's a fight that he wouldn't want it to finish that way. Mm -hmm. uh, no, he probably could have been stopped at the same time. Miguel wanted to go, wanted to. To, to go to 12 rounds, so, you know. Okay, yeah. I'm going to be a point that's not my decision, it's not really up to me, so, you know, that's, that's part of things is up to his trainers and his, and his coaches that are in the corner on the mat, but, you know. Okay, I, I, uh, agree. I agree, I agree. Um, who Who is uh, Miguel Cordo's current trainer as we speak? Uh, he's still working with, with you know, Joe's still with us in the gym, <clears throat> working right now. Um, you know, as far as, the, I know they're looking at a, a couple of new guys, nothing's really been announced yet, um, so... I prefer not to comment too much further on that, but you know, I think in the next week or so they'll begin to reveal who will be the new guy for the new, the new trainer for Miguel for the next fight. Now. Okay, okay. And um, what what kind of a uh, condition training are you doing different uh, for Miguel Cotto's upcoming fight where you're reforming? Uh, the conditioning, uh, we, we we make some changes for conditioning. Um, the conditioning is working. You know, he was he was he was good for the fight. He's been good for the fight. Give us that, but. Make subtle changes in the camp, but it could be interesting for him. And if you wanted to focus on something a little bit differently, then we do that. But um, obviously, make a few changes in the strength since he's coming in a little bit of a heavier weight. So subtle changes there as well, and things addressing you know, the 154 pound weight limit. Okay. And um, has it been hard for uh, Miguel Cotto to move up in weight? Well, you know, it's, this is the this, he's never really gone higher than 147, so. It's not going to be difficult for him, it's just we, we train on the different so uh, um, he's always looks good when he gets on that weight, he's always very strong on that weight when, when we're in camp, so I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to see how he's going to be on the map. Okay. Every good camp, looking forward to the challenge. Oh, good, good. And uh, how, how long have you started working for Miguel for his upcoming fight in June? We've been training for a week, a week here. I had him on a program, a very basic uh, maintenance program coming into the coming into the camp over the last few weeks, over the last two months, a few months, so. Okay. So he does, he is, as, as he has in the last few fights, carrying a relatively good base of fitness, and so we're just going to continue to build off that over the next 10 weeks, right? Okay. And um, I see that, you know, you guys have, have built up a, a nice, friendly relationship, and I, I just want to know how you feel since, you know, Miguel Cotto has uh, stated that he was going to retire soon. Does that make you sad, being that, you know, you won't be training with him uh, for fights anymore? It's not really, you know, it's going to, I'm, I'm not really, you know, you obviously have seen him on my mind a little bit, so it's going to be very tough and not, not coming back to Puerto Rico, but I'm not thinking about it too much right now. I really want to just enjoy this time with him now and make the most of, of this year with him and do the best I can for him over the next, you know, however many fights he has left. But just pretty focused on that now, but, you know, it's been a great run and we obviously we have a great friendship, so... Um, you know, it's not, nothing, that, that side of it's not going to end, but so it's going to be, going to be, oh, you know, it's been a great run, run working with him to this point now. Okay. And, uh, well, let's say after, you know, Miguel Cotto's retirement, do you, do you plan, uh, working with, uh, more professional boxers? Uh, I don't know. 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 I
I would love to, you know, uh, you know, see what opportunities are going to come in the next few months, if, if any, and you know, but I'd love to keep keep, in, keep doing what I'm doing and, and hopefully, you know, continue to develop a bold relationship with another, with another temperament. Okay. All right, Phil. Uh, well, thank you very much for the, uh, dedicating, uh, you, you know, your time, and, and I appreciate it, you know, being that you, you have a busy schedule with uh, Miguel. And uh, th thanks a lot, Phil. You know, I appreciate everything, and, and I hope to see you oh, soon. Thank you, buddy. Thanks for your time, man. You know, good luck, and uh, I, I like the work you're doing, all right? Thanks, I appreciate the support as well. We'll see you soon, man. All right, Phil. Take care, buddy. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it, guys. Uh, that was uh, Phil Landman, Miguel Cotto's conditioning coach. Miguel Cotto has an upcoming fight. Uh, I believe it's June 5th with Yuri Foreman. Um, I basically, you know, just asked him some basic questions. It was a, a short, pretty short interview, but give you guys an idea. I, I tried to ask him the question about who was Miguel Cotto's trainer. He, I couldn't get that out of them, out of him, but you know. Like I said, uh, Miguel Cota is going to announce that he's working with a new trainer. He's going to announce who it is, I believe, this week or next week. And uh, we're all just curious about that. I, I, My opinion, I think it's his uncle. It has to be his uncle. You know, the moment's right. Miguel Cota's father just died not too long ago. And I think that, you know, being that uh, when his father died, uh, his... Uh, his brother and his son well, were not in, you know, let's say in good terms. I think they're going to do it this time for him. You know, they're going to try to leave all that drama aside, and I think they're going to step up the ring together for uh, June. So I really think it's his uncle. I may be wrong, but, you know, I, I really think it's his uh, Evangelista Coro. I really think so. All right, guys. So I hope you in, uh, enjoyed the interview. And just uh, please subscribe to my channel. And thank you for visiting my channel.